Hi everybody, this is Michael Jake with localmentor.com. I've got a video for you today, uh, seven different ways to wholesale houses. And ultimately, you, you may be wondering why do we need seven different ways to uh, flip a house? Uh, ultimately, it really boils down to uh, what is our exit strategy? You know, how are we buying this property is really going to determine how we structure the deal going in. And ultimately, that's why we've got, uh, you know, all these different ways that I teach people how to wholesale a house uh, using basically uh, little to none of your own money, uh, no credit needed. You know, you're not actually raising capital to close these deals. These are all more or less paper transactions. So, uh, you know, first, and in my opinion, the simplest is always the contract assignment. And uh, I'll, I'll dive a little bit more into detail on each one of these, but just, just for now, let's kind of walk through the list here. Standard contract assignment, uh, we can do a double closing, double closing with flash cash. Uh, we can do a double delayed or a delayed double closing with flash cash. Uh, we can sell an LLC, we can sell a trust, uh, we can get cash for a deed, or use two different title companies to do a double closing. Uh, and I know that's actually more than seven, but I'll explain kind of why, uh, at least the last one, I'm not super thrilled with uh, using that technique. Uh, for our first contract assignment, uh, basically, this is a scenario, and, and this is by far the easiest way to, to do a wholesale deal. Um, ultimately, I'm finding this lead from my own marketing more, more often than not. Um, I'm usually mailing letters, doing signs, internet leads, whatever that lead comes from. Uh, it's typically not a listed property. There's not a real estate agent involved. There's not an REO listing agent involved. Uh, it's just me, mano y mano, putting a deal together with the person that, that owns the property. And in that case, I'm using my, uh, my purchase and sale agreement that has an assignment provision and allows me to literally do that, assign my contract. Uh, now, occasionally you will find deals on the MLS. Uh, these are not going to be bank REOs. They're not going to be HUD properties. Uh, they may just be a, you know, a, a, a property that you that that's undervalued that has some dis distress. Um, I, I I recently did one that, uh, you know, it was a rental property for a number of years. It had a lot of deferred maintenance, and the uh, property manager that had listed, uh, you know, taking care of the property or 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 not. Um, you know, and ultimately, it, it, let's not pick on the property managers. It's not always their fault. It's sometimes the person just doesn't have the money uh, to, to do the fix up and the property manager does the best they can. Uh, so let's let's not pick on the property managers and say it's their fault. Uh, the property managers are people too. So, <laughs> um, but ultimately, uh, you know, the, this realtor wrote up the transaction. Um, you know, I met him at the property, uh, made an off a verbal offer on the spot. Uh, he called me back later. We put the transaction together. And, he, you know, I'd given him my card. My card had my name, had my company name. He just literally, literally wrote up the agreement in my name. And the agent literally put and or assigns. Uh, on the contract. So um, in, you know, in this case, when a realtor writes it up, there is a state approved contract typically that, th that they're going to be used. And most state approved contracts are going to have a clause or a paragraph in them as far as assignability. And, you know, in Colorado, it literally is a check mark. It, it is assignable or it is not assignable. So uh, just because it is listed doesn't mean you can't do a contract assignment. Uh, but more times than not, a lot of the properties that are distressed are their bank-owned properties. And in that case, you cannot do the contract assignment. But uh, uh, all right, let's move on to the double closing. Well, uh, before uh, the, the more recent years when uh, we've had a glut of foreclosures, if you were dealing with a bank-owned property, things like that, you could literally just do a double closing. And meaning I would have a purchase and sale agreement to buy the REO. Uh, could be my name, could be my company name. Um, we would take that agreement to the title company and then I would find a buyer. And then with that buyer, I would have another contract from me to sell to that person. And basically at the same time, at the same title company, uh, I would buy one property and sell the same property with two different transactions using the buyer's money 
that I'm selling it to to fund my purchase. Uh, and it all happens basically right at the same time. Uh, and then we would just get paid the difference. So hypothetically, if I have a contract uh, on a house for $50,000 and I'm reselling it for $60,000, um, there's two transactions there, one for 50, one for 60, but that $10,000 in the middle, that would be my profit. And the $60,000 that my buyer is paying, therefore funds the $50,000 purchase. So um, basically in this case, we're probably, you know, we may or may not be using our contract. Um, I did one of these, I uh, did a property outside of my own market. Um, you know, if you watch a lot of my videos, it's, it's pretty clear I do all my business right here in Colorado Springs. Uh, but I did do a property in Huntsville, Alabama, and I didn't know anyone there. I didn't have any contacts there. Um, I didn't know the buyer. So we did. I did do a double closing because I didn't want the buyer knowing what I was making. Uh, so I wanted to kind of control the transaction all the way through. In that case, uh, my transaction with the buyer and the seller were both my paperwork and uh, we, we closed at the, actually at the buyer's attorney. Uh, that was a, an attorney closed state as opposed to Colorado, we close at title companies. Um, it may be an MLS listed property. Um, in today's age, after the uh, banks have changed a lot of their rules to keep us from you know, trying to flip properties, then uh, you know, now they have clauses in their contracts or addendums uh, that basically state that you need guaranteed funds to close your transaction. If you need guaranteed funds, uh, ultimately you can't use a buyer or another transaction to fund your deal. Okay, so right now, not often you're going to be able to uh, count on that strategy if it's a HUD uh, or an REO property. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, with uh, a lot of properties now you can you can do an REO property and you can double close it uh, you're just gonna need what's called flash cash uh, flash cash is typically a, a lot of hard money lenders will use this there are some companies that literally only do flash cash uh, ultimately if you have a contract let's use our fifty to sixty thousand dollar deal um, you would need the fifty thousand dollars in flash cash and literally it would just show up for one closing and then as soon as you resell to the buyer the flash cash gets paid off uh, a lot of flash cash lenders are going to charge you mm, i would say one and a half to two and a half points so that cost of funds can really eat into your profit um and and that's why i'll show you in a couple of other ways how to avoid the cost of flash cash but some cases um you you may need to structure a deal like that uh, in some cases short sales um, you know, you need to pay attention to your state's laws. Um, we were using flash cash for a while in Colorado. Nowadays, you know, it, it's more like hard money because you can't, uh, you know, flip it the same day. Usually there's uh, a deed restriction or uh, some kind of restriction in the short sale approval letter that, uh, you know, does not allow you to flip the property with, you know, the same day. It might be a week. It might be two weeks. It might even be up to 60 days. Uh, so that, those are things you need to keep in mind. Uh, with REOs, uh, usually you can do it the you, you know you can do it within the same day, so not a big deal there. All right, a delayed double close with flash cash, and again I I kind of mentioned this in the last slide, but ultimately short sales are probably where the the majority of where you're going to use that technique, where you know you've got a buyer, uh, they may be getting a loan, uh, and their lender won't close a deal where you're not entitled for maybe a day, maybe it's a week, maybe it's two weeks. So that's where you might need to use flash cash uh, for a couple of days to a couple of weeks to get the deal. Um, a lot of short sales, it, it might be an as is deal. It may not even, it may be a cash buyer on the other end, but you still need to stay in title for, uh, maybe it could be up to 14 days. Uh, and, and really that's just gonna depend on the lender uh, and the short sale acceptance letter. So you kind of have to, uh, guess ahead of time with short sales uh, but please again in in um, in my state Colorado uh, there's uh, you have to wait 15 days before you can even contract to flip a short sale so those are things you need to keep in mind outside of Colorado uh, you just need to know your state's laws and I you know I can't help you with all 50 states I'm not operating all 50 states but uh, uh, you know check out a, a local investing club there's probably somebody that can uh, you know point you in the right direction of where uh, you can get a copy of what the current laws are in regard to uh, short sales or foreclosures and, and any kind of flipping rules and laws that you need to abide by. Um, 
So again, uh, delayed double closing with flash cash. So you are taking title, you are closing on it uh, just to you know, wait it out for whatever the rules are to where you can resell. Um, selling the LLC. Um, this is a strategy I like for avoiding the need for flash cash in general. So now instead of buying in one transaction, selling in another transaction, we really create an LLC. Uh, in Colorado, it's 50 bucks to create the LLC. Uh, we basically go up to the Secretary of State's website. Uh, we file a new LLC in Colorado. It's 50 bucks. Uh, we create a name, and and that's it. We you know we're not hiring an attorney. We're not creating the uh, you know the article uh, you know the full uh, operating agreement and all that fun stuff. We're just creating uh, the articles so we can go to contract uh, with this LLC. Once we get a contract accepted using this LLC and we want to wholesale it, instead of doing a buy sell agreement, we have a uh, with the property we have a buy sell agreement for the LLC. So now we sell the LLC for our wholesale profit, and our buyer closes to the same you know to the contract that we've already created. So it allows you to keep more profit, allows you to avoid uh, all, the, all the cost of flash cash, and and you may need to use flash cash on a given transaction because um, you know as I'll show you in a later uh, example, maybe you didn't create the LLC, maybe you uh, didn't know that strategy, uh, and you're trying to back out of a deal, and better to pay for flash cash than lose the deal altogether. So anyway, there you go. Um, and ultimately, you know, a lot of REOs is pretty much where I, I use this. Before they changed our, our flipping rules, we did some with short sales. Um, nowadays, uh, I, I may or may not do that with a short sale. Um, and again, it depends on what my exit strategy. I knew, I, whether I've got the LLC or not, I still need to be prepared to close on the property with a short sale if I intend to flip it. Um, otherwise, it's pretty gray uh, and, and pretty dark gray in that area. So... Um, Deed restrictions, again, you may need to uh, avoid a deed restriction. I think it's Fannie Mae's. I've seen a lot of them where they have a uh, like a 60 to 90 day deed restriction from you being able to resell it. So none of the double closing strategies work. And if the uh, lenders will not allow a double, you know, a yeah, sorry, uh, if they will not allow you to assign the contract, then uh, this is a way to completely sidestep that. So uh, it avoids the whole deed restriction problem. Uh, when dealing with a trust, it's the same basic concept. Okay, we're selling a trust, uh, not an LLC, to circumvent the same problems. Uh, same benefits as the LLC. Uh, uh, another benefit, there's no fee to create the trust, as there is like the $50 fee to file the articles uh, in, you know, to create the LLC. Some states are even more. I think California, it's like seven, uh, 750 bucks to create an LLC. So you might want to, well, that, that's a little steep. Uh, you might want to figure out a way around that. Um, the problem with trusts are it, it's a big red flag to a lot of lenders and asset managers. Uh, they don't necessarily uh, understand trusts. Uh, usually when I'm filling out a trust to go to contract with, uh, when they, you know, usually if they're going to accept your contract, they're going to want to see a copy of that trust. And if you fill it out the way it needs to look, um, you know, the way a property is deeded into it, who the grantor is, uh, it, it's going to be wrong. So you have to fill it out the way they want to see it. And I know that sounds weird, but you, you just have to create that paperwork so they, um, like it the way they like it. Otherwise, they don't think it's an arm's length transaction. Um, and I have one agent. He's an REO agent here locally. I've done trans a few transactions with him. And he just doesn't like them. I mean, it's just flat out. And if I want to buy a property that he has a listing, he's not going to let me go to contract with the trust uh, that isn't an existing trust already. So anyway, don't try to fight it. Just uh, do what you need to do. I'm giving you seven different ways that you can uh, you know, whip out uh, a, a transaction here and uh, you know don't try to bully the system you know rocks roll better downhill don't try to push them uphill um, another strategy cash for deed uh, this is one a uh, couple weeks ago I was on well uh, was on vacation for a long time over the summer and while I was gone a couple of deals came up a couple of realtors contacted me they had some deals like hey do you want this 
uh, yeah, just write it up. I didn't have time. Or, well, I didn't have time. I had time, but I didn't want to go create an LLC. Didn't want to do trust paperwork. I just, just write it up in my company. Um, and uh, those two deals, I basically wholesaled them. Uh, one of them uh, I flipped uh, for six grand. That one I went to contract at 197 and sold it at 203. So my sales price, I sold 203. And my buyer said, yeah, I like the property. I'm willing to pay 203 for it. Sounds good. I said, great. Here, you know, again, I got the commitment first. Got the, they like the price. They like the house. Now I said, okay, here's the mechanics of how we got to do this. So ultimately I had uh, uh, another title company uh, that I do a lot of business with and that is where the, the property will be resold from. Uh, they had a, we did an escrow agreement. Uh, we we did a deed that we prepared in advance. Uh, the briar in this case was using hard money, which uh, you know in lieu of cash made it a little more complicated. But um, we escrowed a note and deed that I signed. Uh, then we had a note and deed that my buyer signed, and then basically that title company held the deed until uh, the title company that closed the deal. Uh, recorded their deed because in in Colorado Springs we're a little unique in the fact that a lot of our bank owned inventory runs out of Denver um, you know we're about 600,000 in this metro area Denver's significantly larger than that uh, and that's where a lot of the uh, asset managers operate out of so therefore a lot of the title companies do the title work up there and we have um, you know sometimes well in fact in this particular case we just had a closer uh, who's more or less a mobile notary close the deal here in town for that title company so those closing docs are going to get couriered up to Denver and they may not get recorded for a day or two so we can't record the deed that my buyer is getting from me to them until that first deed is recorded. Otherwise, we're creating a, a big uh, mess in the title. So uh, my title company, they hold that deed. And as soon as uh, we know the other deed is recorded, then she can record that deed for us over there. And everything else is recorded. Should I not, should for some reason that didn't happen, there was a note and deed of trust that I signed uh, for my company for the things but they didn't actually get recorded just so you know uh, they were just there because while I was entitled the hard money lender wanted some security and a note signed by my buyer was not valid for the property that's why we did two so the one basically just got torn up after the deed got filed and then uh, also the deed of trust or mortgage in some states got recorded from my buyer so clear as mud, right? Uh, obviously not the easiest way to make things happen. And we did it just because I was lazy on vacation. So I, I wouldn't do this a lot. And you probably need a pretty darn good uh, relationship with uh, your, you know, one, your, your title company, your buyer, and in this case, your hard money lender as well. So not something you're just going to whip out on your first transaction more, uh, more likely. So um, but again, if you're lazy and you're on vacation and, uh, here's a way you can still flip a deal and avoid flash cash and all the other costs associated there. All right. Uh, two title company, double closing. Uh, this is kind of a snazzy way to do things. It sounds great on the surface, uh, where, you know, in, to avoid the guaranteed funds, uh, issue, you have funds shipped in from another title company. So they literally don't see the other transaction going on. Now here's the challenge you'd better have a darn good relationship with that second title company because they're wiring outbound. They're not really controlling the title process on the other side. Somebody could miss something. Um, and I'm not saying that the, the title companies that do volume for a lot of the REO agents who might just happen to be, in some cases, the cheapest people out there, um, they might miss something. So now you've got title company two who is controlling your buyer's money and wiring it to your uh, title company you're purchasing from, meaning that's the title company you don't control, the seller controls that title company, um, you're not going to have a deed necessarily. But you can have your instructions say, look, I'm not wiring funds until I see a deed signed from the seller. 
Um, that sounds great. You got to get a copy of that deed over to Title Company 2 before they're going to be in any position to want to flip that um, that wire uh, of your you know the balance of those funds over to Title Company 1. So it's a little more challenging. It's a <laughs> it's fairly complicated, and I definitely do not think this is a newbie strategy because you're probably going to be sort of uh, vernacularly challenged you're not going to have uh, uh you know maybe the lingo down with your title company to even explain that and uh, you know my experience says you know and i've taught a lot of people here locally and i've had to get involved in a lot of things is usually the communication breaks down where somebody doesn't quite know enough and they can't explain it well enough and usually the title company is you know a confused mind says no so they just say no we're not going to do that um I've never actually done one of these myself. Uh, I have had discussions with my title company in regard to doing them. And even, you know, I'm somebody that does uh, numerous, numerous transactions every month with the same title company, and they were skittish about doing that. So I'm not telling you it can't be done. I'm just saying it's, you know, there. I've, I've given you seven other ways you can do it that's probably a little easier. So anyway, there you go. Uh, seven plus a bonus way uh, different ways of wholesaling a house so um, hopefully that helps you guys out helps you balance what you're going to do with the property based on how you're buying it um, if you got more questions I'm sure you are hey we got a huge comment section below uh, comments questions concerns if you want more information on one of those I'm actually gonna probably do a separate video on each one of these topics just to dive into a little more detail um, so look for those as well but in the meantime if you have a question you want a little more detail on any one of these strategies use the comment sections below hey I am very active check out all my videos I'm very good at getting back with your comments so I'm here to help uh, on that note I hope you got uh, a lot of value out of this um, if you like what I give away uh, you should see some of the products that we charge for I give uh, you know I've got a lot of value in uh, some of the stuff we offer at localmentor.com uh, let me know how I can help you grow your real estate business so use the comments use the questions unanswered questions are the only dumb ones so ask away I'm here to help you in your business all right this is Mike with localmentor.com